Can we check if uh, Jane is? Oh. I hear you. Hello. I hear you. Hello. <laughs> yes. Well, welcome to Starmus. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, Jane, we are extremely, extremely honored and happy that you join our advisory board and you are here today with us uh, to announce Starmus 7 Festival about Earth, about environment, about the future of our planet. So uh, why it is important to protect wildlife in a world dominated by humans? We dominate the world. Well, I think what's really important... Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I think it's really important for us to understand that we are part of the natural world. And it's very tragic that humans are becoming increasingly divorced from nature. We know now that being in nature is good for our psychological and physical well-being. And when I say we're part of the natural world, we also depend on it. We depend on it for food, for water, for air, for everything. But what we depend on is healthy ecosystems. And an ecosystem is made up of a complex mix of plant and animal species, each one with a role to play, no matter how small. And I see it as like a beautiful living tapestry. And every time a species disappears from that particular ecosystem, it's like pulling a thread from the tapestry. And if we pull enough threads from the tapestry, then it will hang in tatters and the ecosystem will collapse. And the tragedy is that all around the world, ecosystems are collapsing, those very ecosystems on which we depend. You know, I spent years out in the rainforest studying chimpanzees, uh, our closest living relatives. And the main thing that makes us different from chimps and other animals is the explosive development of our intellect. But unfortunately, while we can uh, move into these scientific technological spheres of AI and space exploration and so on, we have lost wisdom for the here and now, the wisdom that makes decisions thinking about future generations, our children and their children. And this to me is a great tragedy because I believe that to attain our true human potential, head and heart must work together. I see our human race right now, and this is a poetical fancy, but I see us as at the mouth of a very long and very dark tunnel. And right at the end of that tunnel is a little star shining, and that star is hope. But it's no good sitting at the mouth of the tunnel and hoping the star will soon shine on us. No, we have to roll up our sleeves, we have to climb over, crawl under, work our way around all the obstacles that lie between us and the star. And those obstacles largely are interrelated. Climate change, loss of biodiversity, uh, pollution, Poverty, because people in poverty will destroy the environment in order to survive. Unsustainable lifestyles, uh, the use of chemicals and pesticides in agriculture that is not only devastating for biodiversity, but also killing the very soil on which we depend. And it's harming our own health. Obviously, if you spray poison on your food, it's bound to lead to some of the many, many diseases that are increasing in frequency and many people believe are due to all these chemicals used in industrial agriculture. And another thing the chimpanzees taught me is that we humans are not, as I was told in Cambridge in 1962, I was told that the difference between humans and animals was an unbridgeable chasm, that only personality, mind and emotion existed in us. They were unique to us. And I shouldn't have attributed these characteristics to chimpanzees. 
But gradually, as more and more was known about the biological similarities, the, um, particularly the DNA of chimps and humans differs in structure by only just over 1%. And then all the other similarities, kissing, embracing, holding hands, um, even sadly violence and a kind of primitive warfare and killing each other. But <clears throat> the main difference uh, between them and all the other animals that we now know are way, way more intelligent than we used to think is this explosive development of the in intellect. And so how strange that the most intellectual being that's ever walked the planet, presumably, uh, is destroying its only home. And I, I believe there's a window of time. And I believe that one of the most important things right now is to give people hope. Because if we lose hope, we fall into apathy and do nothing. And then we definitely are doomed. And in particular, our young people. That's why I work uh, 300 days a year going around the world, and particularly raising awareness in everybody, but our groups of young people, we call them roots and shoots, in 68 countries from kindergarten through university, they all have as their main um, saying, every single one of us matters, every single one of us has a role to play, every single one of us makes some impact every single day and we can choose what sort of impact we make and because i learned in the rainforest how everything is interconnected each group chooses projects one to help people one to help animals one to help the environment and something that's very important that comes out of this and i say it's important there's already been mention of the war in ukraine and the conflict between Israelis and Palestinians, Indians and Pakistanis, the conflicts in Sudan, which have broken out again in Mali and other places too, and the social unrest. Very often, it's due to the fact that we tend to um, separate the different aspects of humanity. And the young people in our Roots and Shoots program, we try to bring them together, usually virtually, and they come to understand that much more important than the color of our skin, our language, our, our socioeconomic position, uh, even our religion and our culture is the fact we're all humans. We all share the same blood. We all laugh. We all cry. We are a family. Yes, there's fighting, even in families, uh, human families, there are many, many squabbles, but at least we are one family. So I am concerned about my grandchildren and their children and their children. I'm concerned about the present. I'm concerned about saving the planet now before it's too late. And so at the end of all our Roots and Shoots gatherings, I was finding that the children were standing together from different places and saying, together we can. And I said, yes, we can, we have the tools, we know what to do, but do we have the will to do it? Politicians and businesses, do they have the will? So now the young people stand up, together we can, together we will, and I add, and together we must. And I've even had big groups of businessmen and politicians joining in that. Because one thing the children do, they can influence their parents and their grandparents. And I'll end with one last example. A CEO of a big international company told me that for 10 years, he's been really working to make all his um, officers around the world, all his um, projects to be ethical for the environment, for the people, fair wages, helping the communities in his offices around the world and in the way he treats his customers. He said, for three reasons, I've seen the writing on the wall, we're using up natural resources in many places too fast for nature to replenish them. Secondly, consumer pressure. People are beginning to ask questions about where did this come from? Could I have bought it locally? Did it harm the environment? Was it cruel to animals? Is it cheap because of unfair wages? And if so, they're demanding different kinds of products. But he said, what tipped the balance was my little girl of eight 
she came home from school one day and she said, Daddy, they're telling me that what you're doing is hurting the planet. That's not true, is it, Daddy? Because it's my planet. Thank you.